me and two, everyone's isn't different. Everybody cornbread don't taste the same. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, so the reason why I'm starting off with absolutely no makeup on is because I want to try and do a full tutorial using only black owned businesses makeup, okay? Um, with all the sets of my makeup, I do know that I don't have all products that are black owned. I do have some products um, and I don't have a lot. So I say that to say sometimes um, we wanna even though we're black, we're, we are, I don't want to say the issue, but like we are fighting for that. But sometimes we also have to put our money where our mouth is and also support those black owned brands. Not saying I don't looking at what I got here. I'm, I, I do a pretty good job, but I know I can do better. Um, with that, as I'm going through the steps, of, I'm going to be writing down the items that I need to look for that are black owned. I have my pad right here. I already have some stuff written down and it says I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I have so far. So black owned that I need brushes for sure. I, don't, I know already all the brushes I use are not black owned. And then my brows, which I, oh, wait, wait, my brows, which I usually do off camera for the most part. <clears throat> I know are not black owned. So as I'm going through the video applying my makeup, I'm going to be telling you the products that I am using that are black owned. If they are not black owned, I'm not going to mention what I'm using. Um, <clears throat> but I will add it to the list of what I need to get. And then the next time that I do like a full on makeup shopping or over time, like not a long time, but over a course of the periods of time, I'm gonna go through and purchase those things and add them to my collection. And then maybe I'll come back and do a haul based off of this list as well. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. But enough chit chat, let's get into the video. And yeah, I'm gonna start with my eyes because that's what I always start with. I have my handy dandy tape here. You guys know I always put tape on the edge of my eye just because I don't know it just makes my life easier and I don't care who doesn't like it because y'all aren't doing my makeup I am yeah I'm just gonna put a little tape there this also helps when I line my eyes as well it just speeds up that whole process but I'm gonna put it there I don't even know if I really want a sharp edge I don't know but that's what we're gonna start with um, I pretty much have everything set up. So again, I'm not going to mention the brushes that I'm using um, because none of them are black owned that my, to my knowledge, like I know I have a few black owned, um, brushes, but they're like sprinkled in here and there. They're not like fully, um, they're like brushes I may have gotten when I purchased something else, like my Juvia's Place brush is one of their highlighter brushes, stuff like that. But I know I don't have like a ton of them. So I'm not going to mention any of the brushes that I'm using unless I happen to come across one that I use that I know for sure is a black owned brand. Okay. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> so for, to prime my eyelids, I'm going to go in with my concealer. I'm going to go in with my... Juvia's Place Concealer, I believe. I'm gonna use the shade number 11. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna use the shade number 11. And this look is gonna be really simple. I'm not trying to do the most right now. I kind of have an idea in my head of how I want my makeup to look. Um, I kind of want to do like a brownie kind of look. So it's gonna be a lot of browns, a lot of neutral tones going on. I already know what lipstick I want to wear. And I'm doing all of this to go absolutely nowhere, to be honest with you. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And that is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Concealer in the shade number, I think that was 11. Yeah, number 11. This is also the shade that I use to highlight um, my skin as well. And then I'm actually going to go in and set that. I don't always do this. Um... But I'm going to do it today because I want to and I feel like it would be kind of slightly necessary for the kind of look that I'm going for. 
And the powder that I'm using, I'm actually using the Beauty Bakery um, <clears throat> Flower Setting Powder in Almond. And I'm just going to use that to set it. You can use Kalahari. I mean, uh, you, know, you can use, uh, not Kalahari, what is that, Plantain um, is the other one as well. But I'm going to use this one just because it's just kind of, you know, my shade of powder. So, for the makeup look, I am going to be using my Juvia's Place palettes. Um, that kind of should have been a given because I have all of them. Um, the first one I'm going to be going to is the Nubian palette, which is this one right here. This is kind of like one of their older ones, kind of ones that they have. But I'm going to go in with this shade right here, Morocco, which is like black girl staple. Like, if you don't have Morocco, if you don't have this palette and you use Morocco, like... It's the only shade that you can find like this. Uh, what are you doing with, with your life? And I'm just going to be using that as my transition. It is like the perfect orangey transition shade. Literally <clears throat> the best one um, that I've ever personally used. And I'm just kind of putting that on kind of messily. Messily. And I'm just really working that in. And I'm kind of just dabbing it right now. I'm not actually bunding it out yet. I'm just kind of working it into that transition area damn near up to my brow but we're not gonna go too far up but I just like it right in that kind of like that big space that's usually wide open nowhere near my lid and then I'm gonna sweep it back and forth like this <clears throat> and I decided to do this video because I just I've been feeling slightly uninspired to film not uninspired but just overwhelmed and I just <clears throat> didn't know what to do and I like kind of put a pause on all the videos that I had already had recorded and scheduled because I just didn't feel like it was quote unquote appropriate to put those videos up so you'll notice like after this video the next like two or three videos those were pre-recorded probably like a month ago um, and I'm just putting them out now that I feel a little better, a little more comfortable, a little, not so much less overwhelmed because I mean, I'm black every day. So like, this is normal for us, but I just feel just a lot better. I don't know how else to word that, but just, I feel a lot better as far as getting back into the swing of this, as far as like the YouTube world. But I also wanted to do something. I know I did my last, you know, video that I posted <clears throat> kind of just like, a tribute to George Floyd and just all the other victims um, right now and I did that video but I also wanted to do a video with me actually talking because I don't usually talk in my tutorials it's not really something I like to do to be honest with you guys so um, it's, it's, just not, it's not something I, it's not that I don't like doing it it's just Sometimes when I'm doing my makeup, it's more of a therapeutic thing for me. So like talking through that, like takes the therapeutic feeling for me out of it. So I don't always talk in my tutorials. So that's why you see me doing a lot of voiceovers and things like that. It's because of that. Doing my hair, doing my makeup is kind of therapeutic. It's kind of like my me time. It's kind of like, you know, time for me to just sit in my thoughts. So when I'm doing voiceovers, you know, that's a different mood that I'm in. So usually when I'm <clears throat> doing my makeup and my hair, it's not necessarily um, that I don't want to talk to you guys. It's just that those moments in my life, like YouTube isn't a job for me. This is something I would like to turn it into a job, but as of right now, it's not. So right now, the way that I approach it, oh, this is time where I can like sit down, make myself feel good, make myself feel pretty, that type of thing feeling. And then if I'm talking to you guys, it's kind of like, okay, this for you guys or this for me <laughs> like you know what I mean <laughs> like it's for you guys after the fact but in the moment it's about me so I don't usually talk through my videos but I just kind of really wanted to do this particular video because one I didn't see anyone do a video like this um especially a micro influencer it's I don't want to say it's easy but sometimes when you have PR being sent to you you're gonna have access you're more likely to have access to brands that some of us never heard of to be honest um because brands are sending you things all the time i purchase all of my makeup all of my makeup my hair care some brands send me stuff but 
80% of it I buy. So to be a cons actual consumer, um, sometimes you think you are purchasing black owned and then now the line you're like, oh, you're not even black owned even though you're catering to black women. Like there are certain brands like that, that I do like, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing because it's nice that you are inclusive, but sometimes, um, when you go in and like you're in a section of, you know, I don't know the drugstore and you're like, Oh, they have a ton of dark shades. They must be black. And then you're like, Oh, you're not black. It's fine. Like I appreciate the fact that you're inclusive, but you know, it's kind of like that marketing strategy, uh, strategy when it comes to things like that. So I kind of wanted to make it my business to actually have things that are black owned. And as I was going through, I was going to do like, like I came into my room, like, Oh, I'm going to do a full face of black owned business. And then I'm looking through and I'm like, I, yeah, I have some, but I'm like, damn, it's a lot that I don't have that aren't black owned. So I kind of want to take accountability as well for myself to be like, Hey, you could do better. Like I, there should be no reason why I, it shouldn't be that easy for me to come in here and film a full black owned business tutorial. It really shouldn't be that hard. So that's why I decided to do this particular video in general. And I'm sorry, I'm like talking and not staying on track, but <clears throat> Next, I'm going to go into literally the only reason I pulled this palette out was for that shade Morocco. Just, just so you know, the rest of the shades are probably going to be coming from this palette. This is the Chocolates Mini Palette from Juvia's Place as well. And I'm going to be going in that. And I'm going to go into, use this brush, uh, this light, this it's like slightly deeper than Morocco. So I'm going to go in with that shade next. And kind of apply it underneath slash overlapping Morocco just so that it's a nice gradient kind of effect here that I'm envisioning. And this is actually the funny thing about this shade or almost the annoying thing about the shade. It's a lot deeper when you apply it than it looks in the pan. So that's why I didn't go straight in with this because I knew what time it was. So I'm going to slightly go in here. And just kind of work it back and forth. I don't want it to, again to be too dark. I'm probably going to go back and work Morocco, Morocco and blend it out a little bit more. This is just really, really, really deep. Like, look at that. Like that doesn't even look, it looks completely different actually than the pan. Like it looks completely, it's a lot deeper. So just keep that in mind when you're using the shade. I know when I first went into it, I was like, oh, this is so pretty. And then I applied it, I was like, oh no. It actually a lot darker when you apply it on your face. So just keep that in mind when you're using the shade because it is slightly deceptive, Juvia's, slightly. I still like it, but it's just very deceptive when it's not the actual shade that you were, or you know what I mean? Like it wasn't what you were going for what you were going for versus what you got. And I'm just gonna blend it in a little bit. And I might use, just use one other shade from this palette. And then I'm gonna go back in with that same brush that I was using to apply Morocco. I'm not gonna apply any more product, but I'm just gonna kind of blend both of those together just so that it's kind of like a nice ombre. Oh, this, this shade Morocco is just bomb. I need to pull it out more. I'm just going to kind of blend that so that it's not too, too harsh. And I want it to be nice and blended, nice and seamless. I usually do a lot of cut creases, creases because they're just fun to me. I don't know. Now I'm going to go on with the deepest shade or as soon as I find me a brush, get my life together. The deepest uh, kind of warm tone shade, it's this one right here. This one over here is a little bit cooler and kind of like greeny. I don't want that. I want to kind of keep it very warm. So I'm going to go on with this one. Actually, I think the one on the other end would be kind of possibly a good color. And I'm just going to apply this right on the lid. Like I want the lid to be super chocolatey, which is something I normally would not do to be honest with you guys. Like I would normally not do this dark on my lid. 
I like nice satiny colors on my lid, but I wanted a really chocolate look, mainly because of the lip that I want to use. So I feel like this is just a nice super brown smoky eye that's super easy to do. This is like that smoky eye you don't want to do when you, you want to do but you don't want to use black. Like I feel like this is kind of what this look is turning into. Kind of what I had in mind, not kind of, it is what I had in mind, but <clears throat> I wasn't quite sure where exactly I was going. I just knew I wanted to use this brown lipstick that I have sitting here. Okay, just apply that all over the lid, slightly above <clears throat> the next shade. And then boom, eyes damn near complete. And I'm gonna go back in with that same brush that I used to apply Morocco. I always use the brush that I use to apply the lattice shade to blend because you are gonna, it helps with that gradient. You can go back and forth between colors if you want, but I don't want this to get too dark and get too carried away. And I know if I go back in with the brush that I use to apply <clears throat> that deeper shade in that palette, it was, I just can see it getting very muddy and I don't want that. So I'm gonna leave the eyes alone for a second. We'll come back to them, um, but that's just kind of like the foundation of the look that I'm going for. So now I'm going to go in with my doo -doo -doo -doo. liner. I think I'm gonna go with my liner now. Possibly. Actually, let me fit my lashes. I'm gonna fit my lashes and then I will be back. These lashes are black owned, but I'll be back um, in a second because I wanna kind of fit these to my eyes first because this is the first time I'm wearing this particular pair. So yeah, let's do that first. Okay, so I trim my lashes so that they'll fit my eyes perfectly. Um, these are the Lavish Luxe lashes. I've mentioned them in videos before. This style is the one Danny. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see because these are so freaking pretty. There they are. And I actually put that sticker on there so I can know which shade they are. I usually have it on the back, but <clears throat> I just stuck it there for now. So those are the lashes. They are so pretty. They're mink lashes. So these are real mink lashes. So I try to take care of them. I actually specifically use these on this makeup look because I'm not using any like real glittery eyeshadow and I don't want these to get ruined. So <clears throat> that's why I'm using these. I'm just gonna want my lash glue. These lavish lashes are black owned. Um, I do need to find, I guess, some lash glue that is black owned. And I actually have a brand in mind as well. So I'm actually gonna write that down in one second. Let me just apply my glue. I actually wasn't, I was gonna try this another way. Okay, maybe I'll do it on the next lash when you apply your lash glue to your actual eye and then do it. I'll do that on the next eyelash because I haven't tried that trick before and I want to see if that works out better. And it's usually harder for me to apply my left lash anyway, so we're going to do that. Oh, come on now, cut the tip off, girl. I'm actually going to write that down now. <clears throat> I'm gonna write lash glue. And I'm like, it's getting very, it's gonna be very specific because at the end of the day, lash, I can't get lashes, Jesus. Lash glue. And I actually have a brand in mind, so I'm just gonna write that brand next to it, which is Jo Michelle. Um, she has a channel here on YouTube, and I know that she has a lash glue. So, wrote it down. Lash glue. And I just wrote the brand down just because I know she has some. So <clears throat> I might buy other ones besides hers, but she's the first one that came to mind. So I wrote that down so that one, I don't forget. And two, <clears throat> you know, they are out there. It's just we have to hop online and make our purchase and stop, stop playing these games. So while that's drawing, I'm going to go in with my liquid liner. Um, I just had it. Where'd it go? 
Um, I'm gonna use the Beauty Bakery one, the Lollipop liner, and I'm gonna use this to line my top lash line. One, mainly just to hide the band, honestly. So that's why I'm starting in the outer portion first. I wanna hide that lash band 100%. And then I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do a little wing. So now I'm going to go into the complexion for now. Let's hop into that because that's my favorite part. I'm going to go in with my primer, which is not black owned, so I'm not going to mention it. And I'm going to add it to the list. I don't have any black owned face primers. So I'm going to face primer. I didn't write any suggestions down because I know there's actually a lot that I could use. And I just don't have any. So we're gonna add that to the list of black owned things that I need. I'm gonna go on with primer. I'm not gonna do the powder, the moisturizer set, spray, primer stuff that I usually do. I'm just kind of doing a basic thing for now because honestly I'm not even going anywhere to be doing all that. Like just, just doing the most just to sit in the house. But. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to set my primer, which is what I do in place of that other routine. And I'm going to go in with the Beauty Breakery setting powder again in the shade uh, Almonds. And I'm just going to go in with any brush and kind of just set that. I'm not going in too heavy, just so lightly. You can probably use some fluffier brush for this, but this is the brush that I grab, and this one is actually by Juvia's Place, so black on brand. She sells these, and I actually do like this brush a lot. Um, but the funny thing is, I don't use it for their foundation that often. I use it for a lot of my other foundations, but not for theirs. I don't know why, but I just don't. So, I don't know if I want to conceal on top, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll conceal on top because I've been doing it the other way lately. So I'm going to go with my foundation. I'm actually going to go in with the Beauty Bakery Cake Mix Foundation in the shade 17. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of the Juvia's Place Concealer in number 9 um, as well because the Cake Mix Foundation is slightly red and I'm just going to Go with like that much of the concealer and I'm gonna go in with a just like one one good pump of the cake mix for now we'll start there and then I'm just gonna mix it together on the back of my hand just kind of tone down that that red a little bit just a little bit it's a little too much for me I'm going go in and then it kind of is more like that now. So a lot better than just the red. I'm just going to go in and just apply that. That might be a little too light. Ooh, girl. Might be a little too light. That's okay. We'll fix it. I'm actually going to go. Uh, I'll use this brush because I have it. I'm going to use this brush. It's burning out for low light. But the Cake Mix 1, I feel, oxidizes. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, so for right now, this is what I'm gonna do. Oh, doesn't look bad. Ooh, girl, this is light. Renelle, you are tripping. But don't worry, we gonna fix it. We gonna fix it. I should have added two pumps of the Beauty Bakery one, but that's okay, girl. We gonna fix it. That's what you gotta keep telling yourself. It gonna work itself out. It's gonna work itself out. Slightly ghostly. Slightly. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting nervous. Let me just get another pump. Let me just go on one more pump of the... 
I'm getting nervous. So let's blend that in and then let's, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. I'm gonna do a light second layer of this so that I don't feel super exposed. <laughs> Overexposed. I'm gonna go on with a little bit of my, with my beauty blender and just continue to blend that out. Just to make sure everything's nice and seamless, soak up any extra foundation, even though I didn't apply that much, I still don't want any excess and this kind of helps take away the oils when I use a, the blender afterwards, so. Okay. Okay, not bad, girl, not bad. Now I need to do my under eyes. I'm gonna apply a little bit of corrector, um, which I don't have a black-owned corrector. I don't believe Black Radiance is black-owned, but this is the black-owned orange corrector. If it is, you can correct me. Um, I'm not positive. I feel like it's one of those brand that's maybe catered toward darker complexion, but it's still not black-owned. I'm not positive about it, um, so I'm not going to put it out there that it is. Um, but I know a lot of their products are geared toward women of color. So I'm going to add a color corrector to the list. If you guys know if Black Radiance is black owned, let me know. It's not one that I'm confident in saying that it is. It's like one of those like Milani brands. Like Milani is geared towards women of color. But I know Milani is not black owned. I feel like Black Radiance may be the same thing. So I'm not going to confidently say that it is. So we're going to go in with orange corrector. So we're going to add that to the list. If it is black owned, then we'll cross it off. But for right now, I'm not confident in putting it out there that it is. If it is, please let me know. Honestly, I'll probably know before the end of this video. And... Cause I'm probably gonna Google it. So I'm not gonna apply that. I usually apply this first, but I forgot. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm doing it now. Um, except for the under eye, I can get away with applying. I'm just applying it in that particular dark area. That was right, right here. I get really dark. And I know it's cause I don't get enough sleep. I don't. I like BS on sleeping. Okay. Now I'm going to highlight and I'm going to go in with that shade number 11 again from Juvia's Place to highlight and I'm just going to apply it right there and up here. Not too much. That was probably a little too much but these these doe foot applicators on Juvia's Place is enormous. And then I'm going to contour. I'm going to use the shade number 7 from Juvia's Place, I'm actually, actually we're gonna wait because I wanna actually apply my contour a little different this time. But let's highlight, I'll do a little bit on my nose. Just on the tip. And not too much, I don't know, I haven't really been liking doing too much on top lately. So let's blend this out with Beauty Blender. And you gotta do what you gotta do to get your makeup to look. If you gotta hold your mirror up here, cause it forces you to look up, so you don't get any creasing, then do it, girl. Sometimes that's what I gotta do. Just blended. So now I'm gonna go in with my setting powder. This is Plantain by Beauty Bakery. And I'm gonna go in with this brush. I haven't used this brush in a while. It's not black on, so I'm not mentioning it, but and I'm gonna 
you want to make sure you get those creases out before you set because then you're just setting creases so make sure and now stretch your feet and then shut Now we're gonna contour and I'm gonna go in with the shade number seven from Juvia's Place and I'm actually going to take a brush, like actually, I'm gonna take a slightly smaller brush. Let's not get out of control. Kind of like a small brush like this and I'm actually just going to take a little on my brush, not a lot, just kind of sweep it down so there's like a little dab I'm just going to kind of work it in and this contour shade is not very dark at all it's probably a lot lighter than I would normally go for but I don't want to go too deep in um, and then I just I don't want it to be super dark and I just work it up like bring it up like it is contoury but it's not too dark so then I'm going to go like that, which is probably did a little too much on that side. But you get the point of what I'm trying to do nonetheless. I'm just going to take my setting powder, plantain again, and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Now let's go back to the eyes for a second, and I'm going to go in with a gel liner this one is by from Juvia's Place as well and I do have a liner brush from them and honestly I'm only using this liner because I don't have a pencil liner um, so I'm actually gonna act I'm actually gonna add that to the list because I I really wouldn't use a gel liner for what I'm about to use it for I would use a pencil so I'm gonna add I let's do pencil eye liner and I know there's some that I can get so we add that to the list and I'm going to go in and apply this to my waterline and I am using one of the Juvia's Place brushes um, this one you can only get with when you order the eyeliner kit I don't think they sell this individually but they do have brushes so they may have one that is an eyeliner brush I just don't have any of their brushes which I guess in a time like this, I probably should just order that. And I'm just kind of connecting my wing to the bottom because I didn't using this liner. And I'm going to slightly bring this in my waterline and really underneath my lash line as well. So now I'm going to get back into the eyes and I'm going to go back into the chocolates palette and I'm going to go back in with that shade right here, that dark shade that I used in my crease area or on my lids, excuse me. And I'm going to apply that right at the lower lash line.
deeper shade that I applied there from the same mini palette and I'm just going to take it on that's too fluffy that's, that's too 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 fluffy girl slightly fluffier pencil brush I'm going to take that shade and apply it right underneath that dark brown And then I'm going to go in with Morocco from the Nubia 2 palette and I'm going to apply that right underneath that and kind of really blow this look out. Now I'm going to go in with some mascara, which I know I don't have any black owned ones. I just need to find my mascara. Where is she? Oh, fuck. I literally broke my freaking mirror. Oh, fuck. I like just got this mirror. I'm so, oh, fuck. God damn it. I hope I have insurance. Okay, that really just ruined my whole fucking mood. Literally, in a minute. I'm gonna go with some mascara. Just a little bit. I'm trying not to get any on my life on mink lashes. But, what we gonna add her to the list of black owned things that I need to get. But, mascara. Oh, I'm so pissed about this mirror. It was pissing me off. Like, look. I'm hoping I can. Oh, I'm so mad. So mad. Like, my heart is like. This is like my favorite thing. I'm so mad about it. Okay. Focus for now. Okay. Now, I am going to. I need some highlight. I need to duck highlight. I don't know which highlight I want to use. I'm gonna go in with this one. This is the Tribe Highlighter from Juvia's Place. This is the Volume 2 highlighter. And I'm just gonna go in with a similar pencil fluffy brush. And I'm gonna apply that to my inner tear duct. Y'all know I like a good inner tear duct highlight. And looking at this mirror is gonna tick me off. <laughs> it's like not too white, but it's not too, um, yeah, it's just like nice. It's not like a white highlight. I don't like like not that I don't like it. I don't like it if it looks like this. But this is just a nice little just give bring some sort of light to this area. And I'm just gonna take some on my finger, apply it to my tip of my nose, and then whatever's left up the bridge of my nose. I'm not big on like highlighted, highlighted looks. Y'all know that. Dewy looks and all that ain't they my thing. I'll do it sometimes, but I need to set the rest of my face, which I'm gonna do that with the almond setting powder from Beauty Bakery. Just to set my entire face. And I'm going to go back into this brush, I mean this palette from Juvia's Place. Um, and I'm just going to actually do a brow highlight. I haven't done one in a while. I usually don't do them. Actually, the only one, the one I'm just going to take the shade Madagascar because it's really light. And I'm just going to apply that to my brow bone highlight. If I don't like it, I'll change it. But it'll do. It's not super light, but it just kind of tones, almost tones down that that concealer I had underneath my brows. That's really what I used 
shades like these for. So, I'm just gonna do that. Okay, 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 okay. If you're on TikTok, you know where that's from. Okay. All right, and then I'm actually gonna take a little bit more of my highlight shade and just apply it to the upper parts of my cheekbone, just a little, like a little bit. Like right there, this right there, that's it. I don't like a lot of highlight, but I have been finding it super pretty. Yes, I need a blush. So I decided to go in with the Berries palette from Juvia's Place and I'm actually gonna take this shade right here. This is why I love this particular palette because I use a, like four of these shades alone just for blush, like one, two, three, four. Like these mattes, just perfect blushes. It's just so multi-purpose. But I'm gonna take this shade right here. It's not the darkest, it's the second to darkest. And I'm just gonna use that as my blush. This is like, kind of like a secondary blush palette. Like, like this could easily have been a blush palette. Girl, we go digging on these blush. I'm sorry, I did too much. I'll blend it out in a second, but got a little carried away. Okay, girl, let's blend that away a little bit. Doing too much, per usual. Doing too much for now. Doing way too much. Done got carried away with the blush. Now you gotta tone it down. Okay, that's better. I think that's it. I think it's just the lips is left, I think. I think the lips are just left. So I'm gonna go in with this liner. This is from a brand called Bleaker Dyke. It's very old. I honestly don't even know if this brand is still around. I know it was black owned, um, but I don't think it's around anymore. So I'm just gonna add a lip liner to the list because I know this brand isn't around anymore and I got this years ago. It was an indie brand. I got it at like one of those beauty conferences. When I say years ago, years ago, like I don't even think I was an adult. Okay, so this is the old liner. I know it's not around. I do remember it was black owned at the time, so I am gonna use it. But I know you guys can't find it, so I'm gonna add lip liner to the list. All right. And it's gonna line my lips. I really don't even need to line my lips for the shades I'm using, but I don't know. I like lining my lips because my lips are really small, and I feel like I need to define kind of where they start and stop. So now I'm gonna go in with this shade from Juvia's Place. I have never worn this one, but I've been dying to wear it. It is called, I think this is Yoko, Y-O-K-L. Um, this is one of her matte liquid lipsticks that come in like her matte slash uh, metallic duo kits. I don't know if she still makes them. I believe she does. Sorry, I just like smelling things. But I was gonna use this one. In one of my other videos, I already used the Beauty Bakery Chocolate for Breakfast lip line, lip this is why I'm not using that one. I want to use something different. So I'm going to actually use this one. And hopefully it's as pretty as I hope it looks. This is kind of giving me like a greenish brown. Which could work. I'm not going to apply a lot of this because I feel like I apply too much. Yeah, I like that. But I think I want to slightly add a little something in the middle. So let me find a little gloss. Hold on. I'm going to go on with the royalty gloss from Juvia's Place as well. Sorry, this gloss is hella thick. And I'm just going to apply a little. I 
I like that. Super pretty. Okay. Now I'm just going to set my face. Um, I know I don't have any black on setting sprays, so I'm going to go and wet, put on here setting spray. Okay, so this is the completed look, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. I am gonna go through the list of the things that I need to get based off of this video. Um, I did write a list, and obviously you can tell it's a lot more full than it was when we started. Um, so I did need brushes, which I underlined because I know I don't have any. Well, I, I showed you if, like, two in this video but the rest of them i know are not black owned so brushes brows pretty much everything i need for my brows pencil gel or pomade powder i don't really need a powder but i kind of like to have all options for when i'm doing my brows and concealers which i know i have some black owned concealers um but there are particular types of concealers i like for when i do my brows so the ones that i do have aren't really the types that i would use when I'm doing my brows. So I put that on there as well. Lash glue, face primer, mascara, or orange corrector, if Black Radiance is not black owned. I'm not positive, I'll double check that. I'll probably update that in the description box if I find out, find out that it is. I will link it down in the description box. Um, a lip liner and a setting spray, which based off of this list, uh, it's not I'm actually doing pretty good. I'm gonna add Particularly foundation to this because I think I only have three foundations that are black owned and I know there are tons more So I'm just personally gonna write that one here of like something to work on getting it's not something in the immediate list I want to get this stuff first and then maybe a couple more black owned foundations So that's why um, I'm gonna add that there because I do have three right now um, I have the Beauty Bakery, I have Fenty, and I have Juvia's Place that are all black owned. Um, but I wanna kinda get some more, but they're not on the top of, that's not on the top of the list because all of this is stuff that I have none of. So I'm gonna work on this list over the next month or two, and then I will make sure I come back and update you guys and maybe do a haul based off of this, just particularly this list and show you guys what I got that was black owned. Hopefully I can find more than one of these things. I'm pretty sure that I can. I know for mascara, I can think of two brands right now that I could get. Um, face primer as well. It's pretty easy to get. I feel like some of these, <clears throat> a lot of these things are actually pretty easy. Um, I'm very particular about my brows, so that just may be hard. That just may be a trial and error type of situation. Um, but I'm going to work on this list and hopefully purchase some of those black owned beauty products very soon. And I'll come back and do a haul of the items that I found and everything like that. So I have some links down below of how you can support the movement. Um, if you need to educate yourself, um, donate sign petitions everything I will have that down in the description box so you guys can check that out um, if you haven't already or if you are clueless of where to begin or if you just don't know what to do and you just want to educate yourself more and just try and make a difference I will have those links down below and yeah another thing I slightly want to touch on is everybody getting into this trend of following black youtubers following back instagrammers and all those types of things all of those things are absolutely great and amazing but what I will tell you is when you are doing that make sure you are following people that you are genuinely interested in right I watch a lot of different channels here on YouTube. I don't just watch beauty videos. I don't just watch vlogs. I don't just watch, you know, uh, you know, the normal popular YouTube type of things. I watch a lot of different things here on YouTube. Now, granted, if you're a black YouTuber and you do videos about yard work, right? I'm not gonna subscribe to your channel. Yes, I support you, yes, I love you, but it does more harm to be subscribed to people and not watch their content than it does actually watching their content. So 
if you subscribe to a channel or follow an Instagram page that you have no interest in, it does more harm to that business having a ton of subscribers and no views, which is something that I've mentioned here on my channel. It's great to have a ton of subscribers and you're hitting these milestones, but if you have no views, then there's no actual genuine support. You have so, to make sure it pertains to what you are interested in so that you are watching and supporting. Supporting them means that you are giving them something that benefits them their business. Subscribers is great, but it does not benefit their business. Views benefits their business. Likes, interaction, um, communication under the comment section, that supports the business. And I just wanna let you guys know that, especially the people that are watching, is sometimes we're just so quick to hop on a train of, okay, let's just follow all the black everybody. But if they have no engagement, it's just imagine someone having a million followers and they get like 20 views on their channel. That That's not support, that's just like, what are you actually doing? It's great when you guys subscribe and I love all of my subscribers, but it really hurts the actual channel itself when you aren't actually watching the content that you are subscribed to. And the content that you are subscribed to that you are watching, you're gonna get recommended more of that and less of the people that you're actually subscribed to, if you understand what I'm saying. So, um, there's a channel that I watch here on YouTube. He's a tacky black tech video. He goes into very detail, like slightly detailed in one of his recent videos. Um, his name is Roberto, Roberto Blake on YouTube. And he kind of talks about this a little bit in his last video and it makes sense. And I've said this before. So just keep that in mind when you guys are following a lot of black YouTube subscribers, try not to just subscribe and not watch. Subscribe, watch. Watching is supporting. Subscribing is not supporting. Watching is supporting. I just want to put that out there for helping. Watching supports. Subscribing and not watching doesn't really support, if you get what I'm saying. Throw that in here just as far as like the whole um, conversation and the theme of accountability and making a change and trying to do better. Those are just some of the things that I can think of as far as the um, YouTube influencer type of community is concerned. Um, and even with myself, with I do do a lot of beauty videos. You don't have to use just only black owned, but I wanna make sure that if I was called out and say, you don't do anything that's black owned, I'm, I know that I can be like, no, I have, and I do support black owned. I'm not saying black owned is the only way to go. It would be great if everything in my entire life was black owned. Some things it's just not that yet, but we're getting there and we gotta make sure that we are, when black owned businesses start up, we are supporting them um, if it's something that is in your area of a likeness. Beauty is something that is an area of likeness for almost everyone in the world. Beauty, hair, makeup, skincare, those types of things, those are kind of universal things um, that everyone can contribute to and be in. So, and those are things that you can have various um, brands for, you get what I'm saying? Um, like just because I use one lotion doesn't isn't gonna deter me from trying out another lotion. Beauty is that kind of market where it's just like, well, I already have a soap that I use. We don't all just use one kind of soap. We don't all just use one kind of lotion. We don't all just use one sort of perfume. Yeah, there are certain people who have a lifestyle that's like minimalist and yes, this is what I buy, this is what I'm used to. But the beauty fun. industry, I feel like we have, like as you guys can saw in this video, I used a bunch of different brands and products from different things. So it's not like I don't just use concealers from Juvia's Place. I use concealers from other brands as well. Those are the ones that I feature in this video, but they aren't the only ones that I have and they aren't the only ones that I use. Um, so I just want to keep that in mind when we are purchasing black, we just really have to try and get out there and support the people that are trying to be entrepreneurs and just, you know, Sometimes I think with black owned businesses, we're scared of pricing and how we price our things. Is it too much? Is it too little? Can my community afford it? At the end of the day, if you can afford Pat McGrath, you can afford a lot of the black owned businesses that are out there that are, you know, look like indie brands, like my brand, things like that. 
you can you you if you can save your money to get the stuff that is mainstream and that is you know black owned support them shout out to them but you have to have the same sort of love for the entire community and not just mainstream do you get what i'm saying like there's enough for everyone that's why like when people try to discourage you from doing certain things like well there's already a whole bunch of other companies doing this like there are a whole bunch of other companies that are selling body butters and wooden earrings and soaps and scrubs and wax that didn't it did deter me in the beginning from starting that and start doing that because i'm just like well what makes mine different from the next person who's doing a with mango butter but the difference is one it's me and two everyone's isn't different everybody cornbread don't taste the same do you get what i'm saying so that's just something to keep in mind that just because there's a lot of people doing it doesn't mean that they aren't willing to buy from you i buy you know obviously i make my own shea butter that don't mean i'm not gonna go out and purchase another black person's whipped shea butter like it ain't all the same it's not all the same it's not all mixed the same it's not it's not all the same. So I think we have to get that mentality in mentality out of our heads as well when it comes to supporting black businesses and stop assuming like look how many restaurants we go to. One soul food place and another soul food place. The food don't taste the same, but it's still the same genre of food, right? Are you just going to go to one? No, you're going to go to the other. You may like one more than the other, but at the end of the day, it's all different. It is different. You go to one seafood, you know, fucking uh, Joe's Crab Shack and, you know, Hook and Reel. Same concept, two different brands. I'm going to go to both. I've been to both. I will eat at both. Okay. So it, we just have to get out of the mentality as just because there are so many other people doing it. So many other different types of brands available that we can't do it or we're not going to get the um, popularity of other brands. Yeah, we may not get the popularity. But okay. we just have to be focused and um, diligent on those things and get that type of mentality out of our heads so that we can have some of the people that are trying to put the money back into the black community, give them that chance to do that. I hope I'm making sense. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit or getting on a little bit of a rant, but I just kind of want to mention those things in this video as well as it pertains to everything I was talking about. I just feel like we got to do better at supporting black owned businesses, whether they're commercial, whether they're indie, whether they're up and coming, really try and, you know, put our money back into the community in our community. And I'm not saying it like you can't support a white owned brand that's inclusive. You can do that, but make sure you're giving that same energy to your own people. That's all that I'm saying is when it comes to being black and stuff like that. Make sure you are just as proud of the as proud of black people as you are of the brands that are inclusive. Like you can't be like, oh, L'Oreal is being inclusive and then you're giving all your money to L'Oreal and then the people that are actually black that are for us, by us, you're kind of like, mm, I can't afford that. But you literally just went on a whole like tangent and a whole like praise rally that one brand is being a, a, you know a white owned brand is being inclusive when here's a brand that is for us by us and you aren't giving them the same accolades and the same praise and the same hype that's all i'm saying just keep the same energy all around <sighs> bring it back in point in this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys subscribe continue watching continue supporting thumbs up comment keep the conversations going down in the comment section subscribe only if this channel is something that interests you i appreciate the view but don't subscribe if you aren't really really interested in the content that i bring to the table it actually hurts my channel a lot more than helps um, with your subscription. So definitely I love every subscriber that I have, but I also want to want you guys to keep in mind, subscribe to my channel only if this content interest you i do beauty i do natural hair i do skincare style videos um those are the things that i do here on my channel and if those things are things that are interested in and you want to be alerted when i do that subscribe turn your notifications on 
comment down below of some other types of videos you guys want to see and i will see you guys in another video also just keep in mind i did mention the next two or three videos that i do post they were posted pre george floyd pre brianna taylor pre ahmaud arbery it was they were filmed before that but i kind of pushed them off but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in my next one thank you so much for stopping in and checking out my channel i really 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 appreciate it and i will see you guys in my next one bye guys